Having spent 12 years in full-time research into the electronic voice phenomena, and by full-time I mean in daily research, I feel that this does qualify me to express an opinion on the question of the origin of the voices. If I wanted to carry favour with the establishment and the few parapsychologists who have shown some interest in the EVP, then I know that my attitude must reject the survival hypothesis and also seek to explain the voice phenomena as a psychological one, a manifestation of unconscious drives that are expressed by some PK type action. Various PK models could be used that have their support and would offer a mechanistic explanation. Having in mind, however, the mind-brain problem in relation to survival, which for me is the relevant issue that remains unresolved, I would like to state my case briefly as follows. I believe 75% of the recorded voices that I have made of over 30,000 recordings show that there are various male and female voices and even children's voices of different types and of apparent different nationalities who communicate with us and based also on the content of their statements to us, I cannot believe that this comes from one mind. Therefore, taking all the facts together into consideration, it is my opinion that the voices come from other intelligences in space, outside, that is, of the researcher. In order to make sense of this proposition, I assume that there are other dimensions beyond our five senses. Physicists would call this hyperspace. It is possible for there to be any number of other dimensions and there is also no actual reason to believe there is only one voice source. Certainly some voices do claim to be the voices of the dead. Quote, from an actual voice recorded. We are still alive and we are the departed. Critics who have said how can we tell the voices are speaking the truth have of course a point but let us be frank about it. Who is speaking to us in the first place? The very fact that voices speak to us, address us by name, and show that they are aware of our recording situation and methods indicates an intelligence at work. Here one example is a voice that I recorded that states quite clearly link onto this frequency. I repeated it here about six times. At the at the time this recording was made, I was tuning in close to the alleged Jorgensen frequency of 1445 kilohertz. So therefore, it's a perfectly logical statement to be made to me, and I could give many similar examples. Here is an interesting voice, B quality voice. Obviously someone who knows about me, who's heard me speak before, who's been involved in these recordings, a male voice states, and Bonner speaks with more confidence. Here it is. <laughs> I have found in 
incidentally that by reducing the bass and increasing the treble it often enhances the clarity of these recordings. A few British researchers have stated that the voices tell us nothing new, tend to be banal, and they seem to become easily discouraged. I must say that this is not my experience, and I would uh, believe that either they have been unfortunate in their recordings, or they have more likely not examined the results they have obtained thoroughly enough. In conclusion, I can only say that the more I listen to the tape recordings, the more aware and conscious am I that we are dealing with an intelligence that is perfectly aware of what we are doing. And the electronic voice phenomena, for all its faults, all its problems, is a remarkable breakthrough into the unknown and does give a new insight into the nature of man and indeed of the nature of reality. It questions many concepts previously held and accepted. In the future it must have a profound effect on parapsychology and indeed possibly also on physics. Thank you for your attention. This is George Gilbert Bonner, St. Leonard's-on-Sea, Sussex, November the 8th, 1983.